Today I am going to talk about 8 misconceptions about coding. The number one misconception is that programmers need to be great at maths, they need to have memorized all the mathematical formulae. That's not true at all. That might be true for some people you know working at Google or Facebook who are working on uh, top notch algorithms and optimizations. But for a regular software developer, the number one skill you need is actually problem solving, not math. If you have basic understanding of mathematics, you can be a good programmer. Another misconception about programmers or coders is that they have all the syntax memorized and you know they do, do it all at once and it just works. That's not true at all. I myself use a lot of uh, Google and I look at other people's code uh, for reference and I also go to communities like Stack Overflow to find answers to many of the problems that I'm solving. So it's not this you know uh, this one way pr street process of I know everything already and I'm just implementing it. That's not true at all because program programming is such a creative skill that uh, things are changing so fast that you're always learning new things. And what you already know is never enough. Another big conception is that coders are antisocial. Uh, movies are partly to blame for this because uh, the typical uh, Hollywood movie will show a programmer in a hoodie and you know and in a dark room uh, hacking into some network. But that's not true at all. Programmers need to collaborate with other people. They need to collaborate with clients. They need to communicate. Otherwise, you won't be able to build good software. So. This vision of uh, programmers being antisocial people, you know, staying alone in a basement is completely untrue. Another popular misconception is that coders can fix hardware. That's totally not true. I, I'm constantly hounded by my relatives or my friends who tell me the printer isn't working or the fridge isn't, isn't working or I need to fix the laptop. But uh, you know, as a programmer, there's, uh, my specialty is software, so I don't really know much about hardware. And th there's this feeling that uh, you know if you don't fix other people's hardware then you're, you're a terrible person when the reality could be that you don't really know about hardware and that's true for many software engineers or coders uh, so yep that's uh, another misconception that coders can also fix hardware. People also seem to believe that uh, coding is always about creating new things and you must constantly be building the next uh, Facebook or Instagram that's one of the biggest misconceptions. I personally like to solve day-to-day -day problems that people face which are not very exciting, which are not always uh, sort of B2C where you know the end consumer is, uh, it goes out to millions of people. I have built software that's used by two or three people and you know it helps them in their business and they are so grateful to, uh, to me and, and to, to the technologies that enable their business to function better. So it's not always about building the next big thing, it's about solving people's problems. The next big misconception is that you should stick to one field and one programming language which is completely untrue. Every programming language is suited to a, a different you know, domain. Uh, for example, Python is great for machine learning, JavaScript is great for almost everything nowadays, but mostly for web development. But um, you, know, you must be flexible. Sticking to one programming language and um, you know, if, if the challenge comes, uh, if the software requires you to learn a different programming language, saying no is a big problem for a coder. So, uh, no, you must not stick to one domain. Uh, no, you must not stick to one programming language. You have to look at the problem and you have to find the programming language that is best suited to that problem. Otherwise, you'll, you'll end up building not so nice solutions. Another popular myth or misconception is that coding is for people in their 20s. Uh, that's not true at all. Whether you are, you know, uh, and in fact, uh, you go and look at the comments on our channel and there are a lot of people saying, I'm 10 years old, I'm learning. Uh, programming from your website and your app and our, our videos. Mm, there are uh, people who like older people who are into some other field who are learning how to code to explore this field. So coding is not just for young people in their 20s, it's for everyone. Now let me go to the biggest myth that people have that you need a university degree to learn coding. Uh, coding is one of those fields that sort of I feel has outgrown the university concept because the field is growing so fast that even you know no matter how much you learn in university there's always so much to learn. That's not true for uh, some other fields like you wouldn't trust a medical doctor who hasn't been through college uh, but you know self-taught coders are taking over the world and the, you can learn coding from boot camps, you can learn coding from uh, YouTube tutorials, you can take courses online. So there's so many avenues and alternatives to a university degree if you want to enter into coding. I also have some bonus misconceptions for you. The number one bonus misconception is that coding is repetitive and it's boring. 
Uh, I don't find coding boring at all. It's a creative work and you know, although sometimes you're doing repetitive tasks, usually you're always exploring some new concept or some new idea and sometimes you're doing uh, an old idea, something you've done already like a login form or a registration form but using a new library or a new, using a new programming language. So there's always uh, something new to learn. Uh, it's not repetitive at all. Another misconception is that uh, coders are you know, fat and unhealthy and they like to eat junk food, which is not true at all. In fact, there are healthy people and unhealthy people in every profession and uh, it's the same for programmers. So uh, pro or not all programmers are unhealthy or not all programmers eat junk food all day or not all programmers, uh, you know, don't sleep at night. Uh, that is something that, that is uh, sort of a result of pop culture, but it's not true at all. Now there's also this misconception that uh, class toppers or those who do well in academics can become better programmers than the rest. This is something that I personally uh, am completely against this idea that people, only people who are uh, good at academics can become programmers. The only thing that being good at academics shows uh, is to a potential recruiter, it might show that this person is willing to work hard and uh, they have the discipline. Other than that, there is no, uh, you know, there's no hard and fast rule that someone who is n not uh, so good at st or struggling at academics cannot be a good programmer. Sometimes some people just aren't cut out for that academic uh, ladder and some people are and you know coding is beyond all that. So yes, uh, you know, I, I'm not trying to say that don't work hard at university or college, uh, but you know, you don't hit yourself on the head if you don't like what is being taught in your college and you prefer the more adventurous roads of doing projects on your own and all that, that's really good. Uh, make sure you pass though. That's it for this video. I hope I cleared some misconceptions about coding that you might have had or you must have seen in other people. If you don't have A's in maths, don't worry. Uh, in fact, I have a personal story to tell. So of all the subjects in my undergraduate degree, I have, I don't have, I have A's and B's. I have D's in three subjects and those three subjects are math one, math two and math three. And I am here teaching programming, not just, you know, being a software engineer myself, uh, I'm also teaching programming to the entire world. So if you are, if you feel that you're not good at, and, and again, uh, there's a difference between academic math and math that's, that's useful in the real world. So if you suck at academic math, then there's no need to be demotivated, but you need to be uh, good at napkin mathematics and, you know, real world mathematics to be a good programmer. So as long as you are passionate about problem solving, nothing will stand in the way of you and a programming career. Stay curious and I'll see you in the next one.